Welcome, this is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme five, element eight, ecosystem processes. Good morning class, I'm Mr. S and I'll be your five minute teacher. Today's lesson is a double, no morning. We've got a lot to cover on ecosystem processes, so let's make a quick start. The first process I want to discuss is succession. And a succession is when plants or animals give way to another species. And they'll continue doing this until they reach a balance between the living, bi biotic, and the non-living, abiotic. And we call this balance a climax. So this is actually linked to how ecosystems develop. Because on the left-hand side here, we've got an area that has no life, so it's all abiotic, to an area that has both a balance of biotic and abiotic. The pioneer species are things like lichen and small annual plants. These are species that don't require a lot of nutrients and they're very hardy, they can survive in very harsh conditions. So the lichen and the small plants are going to start breaking down the rock to make soil. When they die, they're then going to place nutrients into that soil. They're essentially laying the foundation so that less hardy plants, like these grasses and perennials, can start to take hold. And that process continues, so these perennials are going to start breaking down the rock with their roots. There's more plant matter, a bit more biotic matter there, so that means that when that dies, there's even more nutrients going in there. And again, that's building on that foundation that means that the larger trees and shrubs can now take hold because they've got larger root bases. They need more soil, more nutrients, and they are more susceptible to changes in their environment. And that's going to continue until both the biotic and the abiotic factors have come into a balance. So this here are our climax community. So in a thing or a set of vegetation, animals and soil that is in complete harmony with itself. The second process is in the nutrient cycle and it's actually linked to our succession because this is the, where the nutrient cycle is happening constantly through the succession. And the nutrient cycle is looking at where nutrients come from and where they go to. So plants will take in nutrients in order to grow. They'll uh, build some of their own nutrients through photosynthesis. And when leaves fall off in the winter or when plants die, that then goes into the soil through the process of decomposition. This would also happen with animals would decompose. So that ends up back inside the soil where it's taken up by the roots in order to grow again. We also get some additional nutrients coming in from the subsoil, so this is like the rock structure as roots and uh, biological life break down some of the rocks in the understructure of the earth. The third process is the carbon cycle. We had a look at the human impact on the carbon cycle in lesson 5.2 and essentially this is looking at the natural part of it this time. So we know that carbon is taken in through photosynthesis and then from there when the leaves die or when the vegetation dies it's going to decompose so it ends up in the ground in the soils which would help to grow grass okay but all living things are made up of carbon so animals may eat the vegetation they also expire so they breathe out in air respiration carbon dioxide which ends up back in the atmosphere and then this process continues plants respiration as well in this entire big circle of carbon. The water cycle you should be quite familiar with from earlier on in school but essentially we've got a process of evaporation, condensation, then we've got precipitation bringing the water back down, it's stored in lakes in the soil it moves through rivers or through surface or subsurface flows, and it can also be stored. So it can be stored in oceans, lakes, or as snow, and then even melted or sublimation into water vapor. Next is food webs. And a food web, you may not have heard of, but you might have heard of a food chain. So a food chain would be like going up this middle row here from grass to rabbit to hawk but excluding the bits at the side. A food web is looking at all interactions between the animals and the vegetation in a biome. So here we have a food web 
which starts with grass. So grass is a producer. It takes its energy from sunlight and it's producing the energy for our ecosystem. The grass is eaten by the primary consumers, which in this case are the herbivores, the grasshopper and the mouse. The secondary consumers are carnivores, which eat the primary consumers. So the lizard eats the grasshopper or the mouse is eaten by the snake or the rabbit is eaten by the hawk. So the energy is moving in the direction of the arrow. So the energy is starting with grass. The arrow is pointing towards the grasshopper. So the grass energy is moving into the grasshopper, into the mouse and into the rabbit. And you can see that this food web is directed all the way up to the hawk. So the hawk is at the top of our food web. Food webs are quite interesting as well to look at how would an area respond if an animal was taken out of it. So for example, if we got rid of the hawk, what would happen to the lizard, the rabbit and the snake? What would happen to the grass? Okay, so if we got rid of the hawk, the lizards, the rabbits and the snakes would probably grow in population because they didn't have a predator anymore. We'd probably see less grasshoppers, grass and mice because their predators, lizards, grass, sorry, rabbits and snakes are more abundant. So they're going to be eating more of these things down at the bottom. Double lesson completed. Think of this as your pioneer revision. Now complete the try it now tasks for the succession. Class dismissed.